Welcome back to the Solution Series, brought to you by Double Radius and hosted by yours truly, Jeff Holdergrid. Today, uh, we're here with Siklu and Alex Dorden. Welcome. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. So, quick question for you. So, where? How did you get in this industry? Like before Siklu, where, where have you? Where did you come from? Okay, yeah, that's, a, that's a good question. So, my background is actually not in the wireless space. My background is more physical security. Okay. So, uh, video surveillance, access control, uh -huh. things like that. So, I, I joined Siklu about. Uh, seven years ago. Uh, so my first role was based in business development in the security smart city space. So using our technology to write connectivity for cameras, mm -hmm. mainly, you know, smart cities, mm -hmm. uh, ports, airports. Okay. Like that. So that actually plays in really well with what you're doing today then, because Siklu actually plays a big role in security, especially in video surveillance and, and those right. kind of applications, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, we serve different markets, you know, Physical security is one of them. Um, they, you know, the service provider market is also a very big market for its largest market, enterprise, you know, backhaul for uh, Wi-Fi access points uh, in cities, smart cities. So those kind of markets that we operate in. Yeah. So, so jumping right into some of the products, because, you know, Ciclu, you know, we had a, a we did one of these a month or two ago uh -huh. and we did it with Terragraph and, and Meta, correct? Yep. And then, um, so you guys all do the Terragraph products, but let's jump right. into millimeter wave or, or eBand. Um, so you guys offer point-to-point -point products in the in that today, correct? Yeah. And where are you seeing, you know, those products mostly deployed today? Okay, so you know, basically we're quite unique in terms of wireless manufacturing. We're only the millimeter wave mm -hmm. space. You know, we we don't do you know microwave, don't do Wi-Fi, anything like that. We're purely in the millimeter wave space, which is 60, 70, 80 gigahertz, right? 60 is license free. Mm -hmm. Most countries, including the US, uh, 70, 80 gigahertz is light license in the US also called E-band, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so, I mean, we provide, you know, connectivity, you know, we really don't care what it's for, you know, a different vertical market, as I mentioned earlier on, like the, the service provider market is, is you know, our largest market probably working with wireless service providers, but also fiber service providers, mm -hmm. uh, plus hybrid, those who do a little bit of both, right? Which is more typical these days, as well as physical security, and et cetera, you know? And, and I, I think really there's just been a constant demand for increased bandwidth, you know, from all these different applications it is, you know, video surveillance, you know, higher, you know, resolution cameras, you know, 4K, things like that. But of course, internet is, is the biggest one, you know, and obviously with, with COVID, a lot more people working from home, sitting from home, there's just been a huge increase in demand for bandwidth. And, and really this technology millimeter wave is probably one of the only wireless technologies, if not the only one that can provide that amount of bandwidth. You know, e equal, if you could say, to what you get out of fiber. Okay. And then you, so your 80 gig point to point product, uh -huh. that is the, what is that called? E band. E band. But yeah, it, what it, I mean, the type of product. You guys call it the Ether Hall, right? Yeah, the Ether Hall series. Ether Hall series. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then your 60 gig is the multi Hall series, correct? Uh, yeah, well, we do different types of 60 gigahertz. We've actually been doing 60 gigahertz probably longer than most people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we've, be doing it longer than I've been with the, con the, the company you know, over seven years, you know? So uh, point to point initially, mm -hmm. you know, um, up to about, you know, about half a mile, something like that, like a gig. Uh, and then we introduced the multi-hole, which was point to multi-point, mm -hmm. um, AD chipset, you know? And then we introduced Terragraph, what we talked about a month ago with, mm -hmm. with Meta, uh, which allows you uh, mesh capability and much higher bandwidth uh, than what we had previously, cool. you know? Okay. So we have kind of, three times of product. I think we're in our like fifth generation 60 gigahertz product now. Okay. Yeah. Now in the 80, what's the top speed that's available today? Currently, uh, it's our 8010 radio, which is a 10 gig mm -hmm. full duplex radio. So 10 gig up, 10 gig down, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I would say, you know, in, in the future, those speeds are definitely going to be increasing. Mm -hmm. So expect high speeds next uh, next year or two, you know, from, not only from Ciclo, but I'm sure from other manufacturers as well, you know, as, as the demand just keeps going up and up. It's kind of interesting when, you know, when I first joined Ciclo seven years ago, uh, it was the maximum speed we had is one gig, mm -hmm. you know, full duplex, you probably remember that, you know, uh, and that was our best selling radio, you know, uh, and then also we had the two gig, we had five gig and now it's Sega, now everyone's 10 gig. We still do the lower speed radios, because sometimes, you know, a gig is, is enough, particularly like other applications like video surveillance, but from the service providers, they want as much as they can get, you yeah. know? Uh, so 10 gig is, is a still, you know, by far best selling radio. And when you look at the 80 gig, just for a little education for everybody, the 80 gig is a big channel bandwidth. It is, it is, there's a lot of spectrum there, and that's why we're able to get those high speeds and everything on the 80 gig. So in your 80 gig product, um, you know, besides the service providers, I mean, are you seeing a lot of like, government building to building, multi-tenant, multi-dwelling, 
uh, school systems, um, hybrid fiber, redundancy, are those kind of the main things you're seeing today? Uh, yes, yes, and yes, really. No, you know, it's, it's all the above, you know. We're doing, I mean, a lot with the service providers, but enterprise as well, you know. I mean, we've done, give you an example, we've done prisons with, with 10 gig rings around the prison, you know, for obviously a lot of data transfer, you know. Um, ports, you know, do a lot of work in ports where, again, they do a lot of data. They're actually using it in that case often as a, a redundancy to fiber because they have fiber as the primary link. But they get a lot of fiber cuts, uh, then they want to failing over onto onto wireless. You know where they want as much bandwidth as they can get, pretty much. And one of the things I've seen uh, a lot lately, um, especially with the fiber guys, is we know it takes time to run fiber. You know, it's not something yeah. that you can put up right away. Yeah. Um, you know, wireless is something where the products are on the shelf; they're shipping today. You can put them up fast, start earning revenue, and still run your fiber over time as you need to. But a lot of people today we see are deploying wireless now getting the revenue coming in and still running through with their fiber. So it's not it's not always a replacement, but it's more of like a complimentary product, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, that's a great, great thing about, you know, wireless is that it is quick to deploy. And even today, you know, we're one of the lucky manufacturers. We still, you know, we have stock available, in particular with 10 gig radio, and you guys have stock, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you can literally, you know, get a link tomorrow and install it the next day, whatever, it would be up and running in day three type mm -hmm. of thing. You know, as you said, with five, it can take you, you know, weeks if you're lucky, months, maybe even years. You know, all the permitting, getting in the equipment, the labor these days as well, right? It's very difficult to come by. Uh, but again, nice thing about wireless, you know, is it, is it, you know, quick to deploy, but obviously the cost as well compared to fiber. But you can transfer it, you can redeploy it. So we find quite a few of our customers do that. You know, they'll put it in now, maybe have it ready for, you know, could be a few years or whatever. Uh, and then once they finally, they do get fiber, then they'll take it, redeploy it in a different part of the city or a different application. That's a great example right yeah. there. Um, so 80 gigahertz being a higher frequency, we know the distances are a little shorter than our traditional, you know, part 101s and unlicensed five gig. You know, so if somebody wants to go a, a longer distance with 80 gigahertz, are there are there complementary things that you can do to to do to kind of accomplish that? Yeah, so you know that's kind of one of the things about millimeter wave. Th people often think a yeah, little, little bit of like, oh, millimeter wave, this is no good for long distances. You know, it doesn't work in rain. You know, some people even think it doesn't work in fog or smog or any kind of incremental weather like snow, or whatever. Uh, but you know, you have to kind of look at the facts, right? Um, we we are affected in distance by heavy rain. Heavy rain does. I'd like to say it, it, it limits the distance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not affected by by fog or smog or dust or snow or ice or anything like that. Heavy rain does reduce the distance, but then it's just a case you really got to you got to plan it right. You got to understand the environment you're going to go in the um, the kind of rain you're getting. You're either in North Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, you get a fair bit of rain here, mm -hmm. I think, right? Yeah. You know, I live in California, so we don't get so much <laughs> rain, you know. But I mean, we you know we sell these these you know radios you know globally, mm -hmm. not just in California, Arizona, but in, uh, from you know the UK and Holland, we get tons of rain now. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and see how we, we sell all stuff there as well. So, you know, you'd have to just kind of plan it correctly and also select the right type of antenna. We have different size of antennas, you know, as, as different manufacturers do for, you know, the, the distance, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all down to planning. Mm -hmm. you, you plan it correctly, uh, but also the alignment, you have those rays aligned correctly. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. If you don't have radio aligned correctly, then you're not going to get the best performance out of it, right? Mm -hmm. As you probably know. Um, and the, you could, well, you can also, well, the other things you need to look at, you need to look at what level of throughput you want. You know, mm -hmm. how much throughput do you want, do you need, and also what level of availability. Mm -hmm. You know, is it mission critical? Is it, well, I need to work five nines, even if it's th throwing it down with rain, uh, you still need it to, to you know, to work, right? Mm -hmm. We really got up time. So there's the kind of things you need to, to kind of look at. But then, of course, when it rains, you're going to lose connectivity. In that case, you will lose connectivity completely. It won't modulate down to a lower level, like what would happen, at, you know, maybe only a few miles. It will modulate down to a lower level, so you still have connectivity, but maybe only a few hundred meg, and as soon as it starts raining, you should shoot right back up again, you know. Uh, but what you can do with those longer links, you can use, um, um, you know, multiband technology. So you have your 80 gigahertz uh, your primary link, you're giving your 10 gig, you know, bandwidth, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, let's say. But when it does, you know, piss it down with the rain. I'm not sure if we're allowed to say you're fine. On this thing. <laughs> but uh, it's pissing down rain, as we say in the UK. Uh, and then it would fail over onto a different frequency, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, five gigahertz is a quite typical one. If it's the case, well, that five gigahertz is in the work of interference, mm -hmm. maybe 11 gigahertz or 18 gigahertz or, or whatever else, you know. Also, going to give you a lower, lower bandwidth, lower speed, but it's going to 
maintain that that link you know um, i mean for example at, at sql what we do we do a couple of different um, um you know multi-band antennas uh, both in our one foot two foot you know antennas we have a, a five gigahertz and an 18 gigahertz mm -hmm. so that way you need one antenna for two different types of radios mm -hmm. you know so that's a really good way of doing it. and then we have some software called we call extend mm so then automatically when when the radio drops down to a certain modulation level which you can set in, in the, the the menu it will then automatically fail over to that secondary uh, link. So it does the kind of the lag for us? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And then, then, then as soon as the you know, ring condition, whatever, lifts, you know, then automatically come back up again. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good way of doing it. Yeah, so what we see a lot of is like if you take 18 gigahertz, for instance, like you just mentioned with that one dish, yeah. you know, 18 gigahertz, you know, you have a solid link at, at two miles, right? So you have your five nines of reliability or four nines of reliability, you know that link's gonna stay up and running no matter what. So you throw in your 80 gig with it, and maybe like you said, you know, maybe it's a three nine link or whatever, but you know, 99% of the time, you're gonna get that 10 gig out of that system. And when the weather comes in, it's gonna slow down. I mean, you still have a gig, it might not be what you need, but at least you're up and running. And for that short period of time that that weather's there, you slow down, but then you're right back to 10 gig again. So it's a great way to deploy high capacity yep. and also have the comfort of, you know, that part one on one band at the same time. So it's really cool that you guys kind of marry the two together. Yeah. So that's really yeah. neat. Yeah. Um, so let's shift over to the 60 gig and you guys have your 60 gig product comes just a straight 60 gig. And then it also comes with Teragraph, which is the meshing technology. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm seeing a ton of that, especially in the security, which we brought up earlier, um, because you guys actually make radios that have PoE out ports, correct? Yeah. So that gives you the ability to set up your, you know, your base station or your, your main point and have it uh, talk to X amount of clients, high throughput, and then also feed that PoE to a Wi-Fi device or a camera right. or anything else that's needed for that. So yeah. is that, that's kind of what you guys are seeing a lot of right yeah, now? Yeah, we're pretty unique in that. There's not that many manufacturers do something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they only have one port, maybe they have a second port, but they don't provide the PUE output, they don't have the additional power, mm -hmm. you know, supply, so to speak. I mean, really the benefits are, you know, to, to, to the customer is, you know, they don't need a, an external switch, mm -hmm. you know, hardware switches, you know, the four, $500, right? Whatever, another box to put on the pole, whatever. Um, so it just kind of makes it a lot simpler from a deploying point of view. You know, certainly in the security space, we do a lot of that, you mm -hmm. know, where they'll attach a couple of cameras directly to the, the radio. Um, also with Wi-Fi access points, again, they can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Connect it straight to the, 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 the radio, the radio powers of the, um, uh, the Wi-Fi access point and, and away you go. Actually, I, I came across another one last week. I was actually uh, at, at a site and I love going to sites, see mm -hmm. where these things are deployed, right? You know, it's kind of looking up and, you know, looking at lampposts and buildings, whatever. And there they actually had something I had not seen before. They actually had a Ciclu radio, which was powering uh, an access point. Uh, and then the access point was actually powering the camera. So I've actually not seen that <laughs> so before. You had it, yeah. So, okay, so almost triple stack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the access point, uh, they actually, that actually had a, a you know a PUE out as well, uh -huh. so we're giving that enough juice, and that could then give enough juice for the camera. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Never that seen is that pretty cool. Because well, yeah. that keeps your enclosure small and kind of win win yeah, win. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, it keeps your enclosure small, just makes the whole power, makes the installation a lot simpler. Mm -hmm. yeah. and plus, it reduces the cost as I, well. I like yeah. it. So, speaking of light poles, I, I heard that you guys are working with somebody to actually provide an integrated light pole that has your system in it. Is that correct? Right, so we, we have strategic uh, partnership with a company called Signify. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to be called Philips Lighting, probably mm -hmm. Philips Lighting, the world's largest lighting manufacturer globally or whatever. And um, they've actually taken our uh, Teragraph radio, uh, the, um, the, the the distribution node, the N36, and they've actually integrated it into a luminaire. Mm -hmm. Actually, they're integrating into a few different types of luminaires. Um, and the benefit of that is basically, it's, it's, well, because it's integrated, you don't see it. It's not like a, a box on the outside of a pole, like the Christmas tree effect that you they get a lot of boxes, whatever, you know. Uh, so it's integrating the light, which is nice. It also makes the installation a lot, a lot quicker mm -hmm. because you can literally take uh, down an existing luminaire from pole. So the, the, the light pole stays the same. What you do is taking out the existing luminaire, it could be a, you know, a uh, halogen light or LED light, whatever. And it's, it's the LED type one. And putting in the new one, literally they swap out like 20 minutes mm -hmm. and the power is all done and everything else. Uh, so that's one benefit just from an installation point of view. And another benefit, I actually found this out last week when I was at the same site, is that because it's it's higher up on the lamppost, you know, also you've got better line of sight because it's higher up because it can, you know, rather than lower down the lamppost. And then the other thing, because how in the street, mm -hmm. 
uh, you could have issues with trees because typically, you know, a, uh, like a lamppost is on this sidewalk, right? Mm -hmm. Or pavement, as we say, where I come from. And then you've typically got trees along there, so you've got issues with line of sight. Whereas, where it's on the out in the roadway, mm -hmm. you don't have line of sight issues. So, actually, that's the other kind of thing. I actually, the, the, the other benefit which the actual the city mentioned to me is that, um, you, they get around issues of, of planning with, with the city because you put a, a box on the uh, side of a, a pole, you, then you have to do the, the low bearing, the wind resistance, all this kind of stuff from the structural engineers. And if it's in the luminaire, they don't have to do that. They get away with it. Not to mention a lot of times we hear where people want the bandwidth, but they want it aesthetically pleasing. So, you know, this is a great answer for that. Yeah. If you're just replacing the luminaire, now you have aesthetically pleasing, high speed, teragraph, multi-point mesh technology. It's right. Win, 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 right? Yeah, exactly. And, and then rather than having to use like hub homes or you get issues mm -hmm. with hub homes or roofs, whatever else, you know, you're going on to the street lights. So if you're working with a city, you know, not always, but quite often the city owns the poles. If they own the poles, a lot easier. If it's utility owns the poles, then also you get the utility involved mm -hmm. and, and everything else, you know. Cool. So yeah, no, definitely. I mean, actually another, just kind of wire on that topic, another way, other ways you can actually hide the radios. I get asked this question quite a lot as well. Can I paint the radios? And yeah, you can paint radios. We've got quite a few customers who do that. They'll actually paint the radios to blend in, maybe onto a building or mm -hmm. something like that. They'll paint them, you know, whatever color to, to kind of hide the radio a little bit. So we, we do, we do that. Get an artist, artist to paint the bricks so it looks like it's brick <laughs> actually, on a brick Actually, I've actually seen, we've actually had radios <laughs> deployed on Dover Castle in the UK. Really? Though, you know, Dover Castle. And they actually had a vinyl front on the radios as kind of like a vinyl front, um, literally like brickwork type uh -huh. thing or stonework. Uh -huh. uh, so that way it's, it's, it's totally hidden. <laughs> yeah, so it's, there's a lot of uh, interesting ways you can do to, uh, to hide the radios. Yeah. So one more question. So, um, you know, you've been doing this for seven years, right, with Cyclo. Yeah. So what is like the most, you know, awe solution you guys have put together? What has been the most, you know, appeasing for, you know, a success or a win or helping community wise? What what sticks out in your mind is probably the best appointment you guys have done. That's a, that's a good question. I mean, I, I'd, I, I think the, the one that I really like the most is a project that we, we're doing, still doing actually, with a, a nonprofit called Digital C mm -hmm. in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So Cleveland, Ohio, um, you may not know this, but they're one of the most, well, they're one of the worst cities in the country from a uh, broadband connectivity point of view. I think they're, they're, they're the largest percentage of the population not you know connected to the internet you uh -huh. know, at, at all, uh -huh. you know, let alone broadband speeds, you know. <laughs> and of course, we, you know, with, the, with the global pandemic, that was even more important, you know. So I, I just see, you know, and there's other companies like Digital C that, that we work with, there's a bunch in New York as well, but you know, they stand out because they're doing an awesome job, they're a nonprofit as well. And they actually use a millimeter way, Siglu, you know, technology um, to provide internet to, to communities, low, low income communities, uh -huh. it's, it's subsidized. So they, they, they got a lot of grants, basically the grants are paying for a lot of the deployment and then they're, they're charging sometimes, you know, zero, sometimes they're charging, I think it's $18 a month, I can't remember what speeds, uh, but you know, for reasonable speeds um, to basically provide that sort of for, the, for, the, for the community. And then, you know, we, we've done, you know, interviews with, with actual users and they have as well. And it's very interesting to see how it's being used. It's primarily being used for kids to do the homework, you know, and, and that is really, it's, you know, that kind of makes you feel good. You mm -hmm. know, uh, we're doing some project with ASU, Arizona State University, mm -hmm. similar thing. We've done some pilots from schools down there as well, you know, and you look at where these people live, to be honest, they, it's like trailers, you know, mm -hmm. really bad. And, you know, the neighbors are coming, well, the neighbors' kids are coming so they can actually do the homework, you know, uh, and, and use that. So you're really helping the next generation, you know, see, okay, these kids are going to do better at school, and then, you know, they can actually, you know, maybe get out of the poverty trap, so to speak, and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. help them with, the, with their education. That's probably, you know, from that point of view, I mean, we also done some really cool projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, we did the the National Mall in DC okay. uh, last year. So actually we have um, Secret Raiders all the way down the National Mall, actually connected to the Washington Monument. We actually have a Secret Raiders on the Washington Monument itself. <laughs> so actually, unfortunately you can't see them because they're hidden in these uh, these Peabody, yep. kind of Peabody enclosures. Uh -huh. uh, but actually on the on the Washington Monument was kind of cool. Uh, and all the way down the, mon down the, the mall, that was really cool. Project. We also did a project uh, for the Statue of Liberty. Uh -huh. That was pretty cool as well. Connected to Statue of Liberty, uh, you know, um, 
So we've done some really, really cool kind of projects as well. But, you know, the, the digital equity one, that speaks the best to me because I've got kids as well. And, you know, seeing how uh, we can make a difference in people life, people's it, lives. That, really. That's always a positive yeah. thing is when, yeah. you, when you're making those changes. And I know, yeah. you know, the last few years, things have been tough. People have been home, been struggles with schools and homework and yeah. being able to help out. That's huge. So. Yeah. So good job. Congratulations on yeah, that. That's awesome. Andrew, so, sure. well, I appreciate you taking some time talking to us today um, and kind Thank of you. giving us some more insight to some of the things Sickle is working on, what you guys have done, and look forward to seeing where you guys go over the next you know, couple of years. I know we've had a great partnership. We have product on the shelf. You know, if any of these solutions or things you've heard today, you know, if they, you know, stick out in your head as, hey, why am I not doing this? Call your sales rep, you know, reach out to Sickle, reach out to Double Radius. Um, we have the products on the shelf. Uh, I'm one of the engineers that knows how to use their Windy tool um, so we can help design these systems. Make sure you do it right the first time. Yeah. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you the next time. Alex, thanks again. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. See you soon.